Luxury small ship cruising in Alaska with a limo driver to pick you up at your door and drop you off home when you're all done. Does that sound interesting? Stay with us as we do a review of Alaska aboard Silver Sea. And as always, folks, if you enjoy this content, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications to get notified each time we post. Our guest today is Larry Jackson, co-owner of Cruise Holidays of Vieira, located in Melbourne, Florida. Together with his lovely wife, Linda, they have been wowing their clients and guests with good old-fashioned service and cruise vacations since 2003. Hi, Larry. Welcome to RTE Travel Talk. Hi. Good morning, Ken, and thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you with us, Larry. So, Larry, we're getting a lot of questions and interest in folks that are looking for options for luxury cruises to Alaska. Now, I understand that you may have just recently returned from a luxury Alaskan cruise vacation, so I was kind of hoping you could enlighten our viewers and listeners uh, about which cruise line and provide us with a few handy-dandy tips for Alaska cruising. Sounds good, Ken. Yeah, we were just recently on Silver Seas uh, cruise ship, the Silver Muse in Alaska. We cruised out in uh, the very end of June and into the first part of July. And we arrived in Vancouver, boarded the ship there, and then cruised up to Seward and then uh, flew home from Anchorage. So why did you choose Silver Sea Cruises, Larry? Well, this was actually our fourth cruise on Silver Sea. The, the reason I picked this cruise for Alaska is because of the all-inclusive nature of what Silver Sea has put together. This, this cruise uh, included a limo, limousine pickup at your house and taking you to the airport, which for us here in, where we live in Florida is an, is an hour trip. It then included the uh, economy airfare, round trip Vancouver and Anchorage. It included a pre-cruise night hotel stay at the Fairmont waterfront in Vancouver, which if you uh, if, if you recall, is directly across the street from Canada Place. It included the cruise, all of the excursions, the gratuities, all of the beverages. It included every single thing. When we got off the ship, our onboard account was zero. It also included a post-cruise transfer from Seward, which is about a two-hour drive up to Anchorage on a train, which is one, one of the most beautiful train rides uh, in Alaska. So basically, when we put uh, Silver Sea had put all this together for a price that was very comparable to the uh, other cruise lines. Interesting, interesting. So it truly is all-inclusive. It really is. There, there's just absolutely nothing else that you can pay. Uh, matter of fact, one of the uh, things we did was we uh, we were hosting uh, something called Distinctive Voyages, and this is a program that's provided by Travel Leaders Network, which is a mm -hmm. consortium we belong to. And on certain voyages, everyone who books with a Travel Leaders Network travel advisor is eligible to take this distinctive voyages amenity, which includes a private excursion, a host a travel advisor on board. And that's one of the reasons uh, we, we picked this cruise was because of that. Tell us a little bit a little bit more about Silver Sea and the ship that we're on. How big, how, how many passengers? The uh, Silver Muse has a passenger capacity of 596 passengers um, and a, a crew complement of, I believe, 326 crew members. So that makes for a much more intimate cruise. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, and on this cruise we only had 380 passengers, so we had almost one crew member for every passenger. But even if the ship sail at capacity, Silver Sea is noted for its uh, its service and it truly is remarkable service. For instance, when uh, we came back to our cabin after the first night, all of our uh, iPhones and iPads had been the screens had been cleaned by our butler. And uh, he left us a little, uh, one of the little, uh, little towel things that you clean uh, right. devices with. The other thing about Silver Sea is the smallest cabin on the ship is 337 square feet. That That's the entry level cabin. And that's an ocean view. There are no inside cabins. And 85% uh, of all the cap, no, 90% of the cabins are, are balcony cabins. So, so that's roughly roughly twice the size as a, yeah. of a normal balcony cabin on a, on That's a right. contemporary ship. And every suite comes with a butler. The butler, again, service, uh, the butler one afternoon came by the cabin and said, would you like something uh, for the afternoon snack? And I said, sure, what do you got? He said, well, how about caviar? So 
about 20 minutes later, he brings two huge plates of caviar with the boiled eggs and the onions and all the, the condiments that go with caviar. And then he did that every afternoon from then on. The, the other thing on Silver Sea, uh, almost all the specialty restaurants are included. So you don't have upcharges for that either. Back to the things at Voyages, one of the things we do is we do a drawing to give someone an onboard credit. And we gave them the onboard credit, but they couldn't figure out anything to spin it on because there just wasn't uh, you know, everything was so included. So. Well, that. That is uh, really something for those folks who don't feel like they they want to put their hand in their pocket because sometimes in some of these other lines, not not necessarily the luxury lines, you tend to get the feeling you're getting nickel and dimed every time they're asking you to put your hand in your pocket for this, that, or the other thing. So that's a de- definite experience, better experience. So what type of passenger would we find on board a silver sea cruise larry is it you know what's our demographic there it, it's going to be um uh, an older crowd obviously but not ancient uh right. I, I think a lot of people are hesitant to go on silver sea because they think it's going to be super snobby and there's going to be just a bunch of really rich people on there that's that's definitely not the case we we saw pretty much the the, the gambit no children and there are no right. children's programs. Uh, Ken, I think what we're seeing in the travel industry, or the cruise industry right now, is a, a move towards wanting to take smaller ships. Uh, for instance, in Alaska, one of the great things about this, this ship being smaller is we could dock at piers that were closer to town. The uh, larger Royal Caribbean and Norwegian cruise line ships and every pier we went to, and they were, at one point, the Norwegian cruise line's cruise was, uh, their ship was uh, docked five miles out of out of town, whereas we were about 50 paces from town. So it's a real big difference on small ship cruising and the level of service that you get on small ship cruising. And you also get to know your passengers a lot more on a small ship too. But again, it's, it's, it's a t- fairly typical crowd, a little bit older than you're going to see right. in Royal or, or say or Holland. In that re- in that regard, then, if we were thinking about uh, it is a smaller ship, obviously the opportunities on board for entertainment would be probably less as well. What kind of an entertainment would we find on board, Larry? Well, you find a lot of music. Uh, you find um, they have on board, uh, let's see, five singers, uh, a, tr- a band, a trio, a live band. The, the f- second night, they did one of the best queen uh, shows that I've ever seen. I mean, it was phenomenal. Uh, uh, they they, they do pretty much all the shows that you would see, live shows that you would see on board any of the other ships. But there's music in all the lounges from about five o'clock until around midnight. I guess the number one thing about Silver Sea is that there's not a lot of light, late night uh, entertainment like discos and, and things like that. Um, they had trivia, they had bingo, they had all of the things that you see on the, on the other ships. One thing you have to remember about Alaska, being a port intensive cruise, there's not, not a lot of time for uh, anything to do on board the ship. So most of your time is focused on your excursions. On that, um, tell, tell us about your itinerary in the ports of call. Um, as I said, we went to uh, Vancouver. We could not board the ship until 2 o'clock because they're doing extra cleaning, 2 o'clock in the afternoon because they're doing extra cleaning for COVID. But Silver Sea provided breakfast and lunch for our guests at the Fairmont uh, while they were waiting to get on board the ship. Cruised out, you spend the first night out of Vancouver at sea, but you're in the inside passage, so it's very... The next day, we went to Ketchikan, and that's where we did our private excursion. We had 19 people on board. That, those were the people in our excursion. We went out to a place called George Pay, Bay Fishing Lodge, and we had a Dungeness Crab uh, luncheon. All the Dungeness Crab we could eat. I mean, they just came pouring it on <laughs> On the table and our guests said it was probably the best crab they'd ever had uh, we also went to the southeastern alaska uh, exploration center which is run by the clinket indians in can ketchikan they have a large reservation there called saxman village and uh, so they showed us their dances they took us on a tour of their museum showing us how the clinket indians lived pre having exposure to the white man so that was all our we had our own buses and uh, private excursions um, then the next day we were off to juno juno is the capital of alaska it's the only state capital that you cannot drive to you can only fly fly into it or take a, a ship into it. Excursion there that everyone really liked. Again, all included. Um, and it When Silver Seas has included excursions, it's not like one or two bus trips around town. It's like 14 or 15 different excursions to choose from. Very expensive excursions. It's not just the run of the mill. But the big hit there was the Iditarod camp where you go and see the, the, the Huskies that do the sled mushing uh, in the Iditarod race every year in Canada. And everybody wow. had a great time there. They 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 strap you up to a uh, they 
put the dogs on a little cart with wheels and go around a gravel road, but the dogs just love it. They love to run. After Juno, we went to Sitka. Sitka is one of my favorite destinations in Alaska. It's it's an island with a small town, maybe uh, full-time residents, maybe 3,000. It, it was a tender port for us so we could get right off in town. The great thing there to do is they have something called the Raptor Center where they rehabilitate eagles and owls and those types of birds. And you get to go in and get up close and personal. It also has, it was the capital of Russia when Russia owned Alaska before they sold it to the U.S. So we stole it from the Canadians. So uh, <laughs> I don't know how they got away with it. But the, it was, Sitka was the capital of Russia, Alaska, and there is uh, an Orthodox cathedral there called St. Michael's, and it's the only right. Orthodox, it was for a long time, the only Orthodox cathedral in the United States. A after Sitka, we went to Skagway. Uh, the big feature there is to take the narrow gauge uh, white pass and Yukon Railroad up to um, 3,000 feet and then back down again. Spectacular. We were very blessed. We had uh, clear skies and 70 degree weather for the whole seven days we were in Alaska. And that just doesn't happen that very that often. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, phenomenal. It was uh, 70 degrees in Juneau. Then we went to uh, Seward where we disembarked and took the train up to Anchorage. Uh, a lot of the flights were not uh, were late flights, which is typical of Alaska because they turn the airplanes around. And Silver Sea had created a room downtown, day room downtown for our guests to stay in while they waited for their flights. So that was Silver Sea really takes care of you. Everything. And then when our guests flew home, there was the limo waiting for them to take them to their homes. And so uh, <laughs> it, it's true door to door service, uh, round trip service on Silver Sea. In, in terms of Alaska, Larry, um, was that a good time of year to go? Yeah. Uh, Ken, we've been in, we've gone to Alaska uh, from we've been there in May all, all the way through September. This was a good time because of COVID. Uh, the ships were not full. Uh, I have to tell you, the the June July time frame is probably crowded time in Alaska. I, I actually prefer to go around August because the weather still holds in that time frame and it's not as crowded. So uh, okay. this was a little bit of a departure to go in june or july but it worked out because again the ships none of the ships were full up there so larry do you have any advice particular advice for cruisers looking to do alaska either this year or next yeah my tip is book now again next year i think we're going to see a, another strong demand for alaska we're moving more and more ships up there we're building more and more piers but uh, the good cabins, the good prices are going to go very fast. So I'm really urging people to, to start booking their Alaska for next summer right now and, um, okay. and, and make your deposits. And then uh, you won't be paying for it until late, late next year anyway. Yeah. So uh, get started right now and, um, and go see your travel advisor and learn all the different things there are to do in Alaska. Well, Larry, that's absolutely great information. If folks want to find out more about uh, that, how to, what's the best way to get hold of you? Okay, you can call us at 321-242-1331. Uh, uh, if we're not in, we've got a great answering machine. Our website's available, just cruising with no G, just cruising, V-E-R-A, V-I-E-R-A dot com. And uh, you can, there's a place there to request information or to send us an email and get, we'll get right back to you. We believe in service just the way Silver Sea does, and so we try to deliver the same level of service that they do. Perfect. Perfect. So you guys are avid cruisers and travelers. Where are you off to next? Uh, we're going to be in town until November. We're going to take a seven day cruise up uh, out of Port Canaveral on our new ship here at Port Canaveral, the Wonder of the Seas that Royal Caribbean is going to be bringing to us in November. We're going to take our first cruise out of the port here at Port Canaveral and uh, go out to the Caribbean. Wow. Anything special going on with that cruise, Larry? Uh, the only special thing is that we are making a donation to the Tunnel to Towers program a uh, foundation for uh, fifty dollars for every cabin that sails with us and uh we've got about uh 15 cabins now so it's going to be nice having a little group of our our uh, folks in our travel club with us excellent sounds like sounds like fun and and uh and a, basically a brand new ship to boot yes exactly and uh interesting ship ken uh she was developed for the chinese market and okay. then they, of course, with the shutdown and everything, they decided not to send her to China. So she's got some things on board that are kind of unique uh, for a Royal Caribbean ship, such as a high rollers casino uh, lounge, uh, <laughs> which you guys are used to in Canada at your casinos. But uh, we don't see that very often on cruise ships. So. Well, 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 you are. Well, you will have to have you back 
after that cruise in November too. Yeah, we'll talk with your exports on board the Wonder of the Seas. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, that's absolutely great information. I'll leave those links in the description for those folks that might like to reach out to you about a cruise or cruise vacation. But uh, until that time, I'm just going to wish you and Linda safe and happy cruising. May the wind always be at your back. And I hope to see you on the Lido deck real soon. I hope so too, Ken. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. And that about wraps things up for today, folks. A very special thanks to my guest, Larry Jackson of Cruise Holidays of Vieira. I will leave his contact information in the description if you'd like to reach Larry. If you'd like to reach us, simply send a question to questions at realtravelexperts.com, visit our website, realtravelexperts.com, or simply leave a comment. We always respond. And as always, folks, if you enjoyed this content, please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. It helps us to spread the word. So until next time, happy travels.